Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of C++ 11 features that you may not have learned or you might have forgotten about. So let's go ahead and dig into it. And in this video, we're going to talk about the const express keyword, right? So this particular keyword allows you to declare certain things as constant expressions. Right? And constant expressions, uh, basically what they allow you to do is they allow you to do some optimization all right, of your code. So there are certain types of expressions where, or certain types of behavior where you can have your compiler do the calculation for you. So this can speed things up because for example, right? I mean, you might have um, five plus two, right? X equals five plus two. Well, five plus two is seven, and then seven gets assigned to X. Well, you can have that be resolved at compile time as opposed to runtime in certain circumstances. And there's some rules and things like that that I'll, that I'll, that I'll walk you through, but the whole idea of that is, is that your program can execute faster so why have five plus two get evaluated at runtime when you could just do it ahead of time you know when you compile the program so that's kind of the idea behind constant expressions in the in the in the constant expr keyword so you can make variables constant expressions and you can also make functions be a constant expression with some rules Right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so let me give, bring up Visual Studio. So constant expression, so what do I mean, right? So here's the keyword, const expr, right? So that allows you to have the compiler figure some things out for you. Right now, constant expressions are constant implicitly. So in some ways, these can replace const variables, but it's not the same thing. Const and const expr aren't the same. Okay, because when you create a constant variable, a const variable, that still gets evaluated at runtime. It requires some memory to be allocated. Okay, and um, with constant expressions, that's not the case, all right? So this is a way, again, that you can speed things up, all right? So um, let me give you an example, okay? So, you know, if you have int x equals five plus two, okay? If you got code that looks like that, then when the program runs, five plus two is gonna be evaluated at seven, that's gonna be assigned to x, okay? But if we instead, add that keyword, const expr, okay, then that gets evaluated at compile time. So before the program even runs. So that speeds things up because you don't have to do that while the program's running, okay? Um, and you can use constant expressions, for example, wherever a literal is required. So for example, if you wanted to create an array, okay? If X is a constant expression of that variable has been labeled as const expr, then this code will compile and run just fine. Okay, there's not gonna be any output here to really see if you let it see out or anything like that, but it's gonna work just fine. Now you take that const expr keyword out and suddenly Visual Studio gets very, very upset Right? So you can see the, the, uh, the, the, the output there, right? Because you can't use a variable as a size declarator, but if it's a constant expression, then you can, right? So this value for X gets evaluated at compile time, okay? So X basically becomes seven at compile time. Right, so that works just fine. Right now, another thing you can do 
is you can label functions as constant expressions. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and do that. So if we say const expra int foo, and we pass it a literal, okay? So we'll pass this thing, you know, like say seven or something in a second. What we can do is we can return, say a times three. Okay, now with functions, there's some rules about this that I'll go over with you, or go over with you in a second. But if I label this function as const expra, then the results of this function call are gonna get evaluated at compile time. So now I can do something like this. I can say int b, and I can put a function call inside of the square brackets. So that size declarator can now become a function. All right. No problem, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right. Because at compile time, the compiler says, oh, well, let's take that three, Okay, then three times three is nine. So then this is gonna become nine. So that's nine there. So this is gonna be an array of nine elements. Okay, fine. But if it's not evaluated at compile time, then problems, right? So take a look at the error message. Expression did not evaluate to a constant. Okay, failure was caused by call to an undefined function or one not declared const expra. Right, but if we make it const expra, then no problem. Okay, so it gives you a little more flexibility, but really what it gives you is the ability to optimize your code. Okay, so this doesn't need to be called at runtime. It gets called or gets evaluated or, or dealt with at compile time. Again, one less operation that has to happen while the program is running. Okay, um, so there's a couple of rules when it comes to dealing with functions, right? So let me put them up here for you so you can see them. So here are the rules. And uh, I'll go through them, okay? So with constant expression functions, okay, with functions that are const expra, okay, you can only have one return statement with few exceptions or with, with some exceptions, okay. Um, you can only have a function that calls other const expra functions. And they can only access a, or reference const expra global variables, okay? So what does that mean? Well, let's create a function that is not constant, right? That's not a const expra. So we'll just say uh, bar, okay? And then, um, you know, we'll have it return a times two or something, okay? Now, if I was to have the foo function call bar and pass it, I don't know, three or something, right? I'm gonna get those squiggles, right? Because I can't have you know, this function call a non uh, constant square function. Okay, you can see that there's the, uh, the error. Expression must have a constant value, right? So there's our squiggle down there. But if I make bar itself const expra, then we don't have any problem anymore. Right? So, <clears throat> you know, one of these types of functions, this const expra function, can only access another const expra function. All right? Um, yeah, and just to prove that to you in another way, let's say that I have int uh, span. I don't know, I just have it return A, right? Now, if I go into uh, my foo and uh, I call spam of A, you know, we're gonna see that we get 
the squiggles again. Okay, I'm not going to compile. Okay. So, what about the global variables thing? Uh, let me fix this. Oh, yeah, this was A, right? So, create a global variable. If I say int x equals 4, you know, global variable is very bad. Uh, but, for this example, we'll show you. Right? Try to compile again. <laughs> Throws up. Doesn't evaluate to a constant because that is not a constant variable, right? But if I were to make a const expra, then we're back to being in totally fine shape, okay? So yeah, that's that's the main benefit of const expra. So later versions of C++11 built on this idea and added some additional functionality, some additional use for this keyword. But again, what's it all about? It's about giving you a tool to optimize the performance of your code, rather than having certain expressions be evaluated at runtime, which would slow down the overall execution of your program. They can be evaluated at compile time, right? So that's the big benefit. Now, of course, there's always pros and cons to everything. What's the con here? Well, C++ programs take a while to compile anyway. So if you've got, you know, a, a really big C++ program and uh, you've got a bunch of const express everywhere, then that could slow down your compile time even further. So which is better? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it depends. It always depends on what the project is and what your goals are, what your requirements are, all that kind of stuff. You know, the, you'd have to make that. There's no absolute correct answer to that question. Right. But anyway, so that's everything that I have for you in this video. If you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, I've got the thumbs down for you as well. Please consider supporting the channel in multiple ways. We've got, you know, you can subscribe. We've got memberships. You know, there's links down uh, in the description for you to be able to donate in different ways. Totally up to you. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video. If you thought that it was great or if you thought that it was terrible or whatever. I, I appreciate your comments. All right. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.